Welcome to the car guys and this week another supercar daily. I've got some chores to do so today I'm going to be taking this GR Yaris over to First Choice Detailing to get some PPF applied to it, get it nice and protected. I'm also picking up the Lotus Elise Final Edition which has had one of the signatures removed and I'm also going to get the 675 LT out of hibernation and we're going to take it for a service and MOT. So if that sounds like your kind of fried bacon, let's get on with it. So hello and good morning from the GR Yaris. This car is a revelation. I've only done 532 miles so far, which is just under the 600. I need to give it the full beans, but already it is heaps of fun. I'm not sure I'm ever gonna get tired of this car's ability to dispatch corners and B roads, whilst at the same time giving you so many giggles. I absolutely love it. I sort of knew I would, but now that I actually own one, it's true, folks. The GR Yaris really is that good. Worth pointing out a few quick observations about the GR Yaris. First of all, I do pretty much hate the fact that I've got to go through that startup process where I press the stop start and I generally turn the IMT on on as well uh, but what's quite annoying is that uh, although I know that I need to turn the white line assist thing off it makes you wait until the computer has fully started so you turn on the car and although I'm already there pressing the button turn off the white thing turn off the white thing I've got to wait about 20 seconds for it to actually turn off. That's a bit annoying. I'd rather just turn on the car, bang, 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 off we go. I also will confess that I have not gone through half of the menus that you get in this computer. So there are an awful lot of menus that you can access off of the steering wheel and I've not yet fully understood them all. But, but I will, don't worry, I will. Now, full disclosure, I've decided not to fully PPF this car, mainly because to do that would cost three and a half thousand pounds and that is 10% of the value of the car so whereas normally I'd be quite happily to completely PPF supercars and other cars with very special paint I think in this case it just needs the front end and the side skirts done just to protect it from the very worst of potential stone chips so I've gone a bit cheap but that's what we're going to do today I'm going to drop off this car and then I'm going to pick up the Lotus Elise, which has had some work done with those horrendous signatures. So let's get over there and see what the Lotus looks like. So here I am, I've arrived at First Choice Detailing to pick up the Lotus. Looks like Jake's having a bit of work done. I think he's having his new wash bay fitted, so there's a bit of construction. But I'm gonna get the Lotus out and let's have a look and see what's been done to it. And here we are, the Lotus is now out in the open and looking actually quite nice in this morning light. So what I've done actually with the signatures is I've left for the moment the one on the driver's side by the petrol cap because it sits in the space a little bit better and actually I thought I'd leave it, see how I feel because it is one of the unique identifiers from the original spec. But what I have done is removed the frankly hideous signature from the passenger side. So as you can see here, it's now gone. And here we are back in the Lotus oh, 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 oh. and it's worth me giving you a brief update with this car no I haven't sold it yet despite many of you thinking that was the case but in fact the next stages are to take the roof off and enjoy some open top motoring and also get the temporary soft top that this car needs and I've also arranged to have the car's first inspection service done actually at the Lotus factory so hopefully by the time this gets to 800 miles it's currently done about 650 miles so then I will make the drive up to Hethel in Norfolk and the Lotus factory they will then do the inspection service while they're doing that I am aiming to drive some Lotuses perhaps some classic Lotuses on the Hethel test track so we will be bringing you a feature length feature packed episode of Lotus goodness when that happens 
Now I'm also planning to wait until I can use full revs before I give you a big first full review of this car. I know it'd be tempting to go out and get something done now, but I just do not think it would be doing this car justice. So I'm gonna wait until after that Lotus factory trip before I give a full proper episode. Well, my first impressions are that it's tremendous fun. There are a few niggles, but so far, enjoyment levels have been high. What I'm gonna do now is go for a little spirited drive, just to remind myself just what a fun little car this is. And I'm then gonna take it back to Car Guys HQ, where I am going to bring the McLaren 675LT out of hibernation. Yes, that's right, you've not seen it since 2019, but it's time to get it out in the sunshine, get it serviced and MOT'd so that we can do some more driving. And as a car collector, of course, it means I've got to move a load of cars around to get to it. But that does, of course, mean that you get to see a load more cars in the collection. So now let's take this car back to the Car Guys HQ via some twisty roads, and let's get that McLaren out into the sunshine. So here we are back at the Car Guys HQ. As you can see in this main garage, we've got the 458 Speciale Aperta, the 911 Turbo from 1989, the 355 Spider, the Valentino Balboni Guiardo, 458 Italia Ferrari, Honda NSX, 718 Spider. Over there in the corner, we've got the Renault Clio Williams 2 and the McLaren 675 LT and my Series 2A Land Rover. And cheekily down there, we have the 917 Junior. And it's a bit of a palaver, quite frankly, because as you can see, in order to get the McLaren 675 LT out of the garage, I'm going to have to move the 917 replica. I'm then going to have to shift the 718 Spider, the 458 Italia, and only then can I get to the McLaren. So this is going to be a bit of a logistical nightmare. First world problems, obviously. to move more cars than I expected mainly because of a couple of flat batteries but there's an awful lot of logistics going on a lot of moving but finally it's done now let's get in the McLaren and go for a drive honestly every time I drive this car I am reminded just how fantastic it is everything is so tight and disgustingly mechanical it is absolute precision the steering gives so much feedback and there is no play in it whatsoever the chassis is lithe and supple but also rock hard it's a crazy thing the way that it manages to deliver this ride but then also when you need it to be as hard as nails is just something wonderful you sat very low you've got the drama of the scissor doors it's very stripped out in here but everything has a purpose and a level of motorsport quality that you just only really find in the porsche gt3 rs the carbon steering wheel and paddles it's a joy to just have them in your hands everything is close by and easy to use i've got reasonable visibility out of that dalek-esque window at the back you've got great visibility forwards because the windscreen is enormous and the mirrors are big it's just such an incredible weapon i've now got the more beefy mclaren trickle charger on this so any of my earlier battery issues where the battery kept running down that doesn't happen anymore this car has been sat for about a year and the first press of the button and it just started right up you can tell i'm still a little bit hot and sweaty from having to move all the cars around but now i'm out on the roads for a quick blast before i take it to mclaren new forest for a service and mot 
one thing I am cautious of is that I have almost no fuel and wouldn't you know it, the petrol stations so far, none of them have got super unleaded. So actually I think I'm just going to take it to McLaren and say look, you just deal with it because honestly I just can't find any petrol. But now that this car is being serviced and MOT'd and obviously taxed, that means I can drive it a lot more, which means that you can see it more on the channel. Something I hope you will really appreciate because this car is gagging for a road trip. It really is. I need to take this somewhere far afield, some beautiful landscapes to photograph it in, somewhere where we can drive it properly and really get the most out of that performance. Maybe it's the Isle of Man, maybe it's Europe, who knows? But one thing's for certain, I am so glad that this car is still in the Car Guys collection. I know it's lost a chunk of its value, but when you see it in profile, it's just such a gorgeous looking thing. There is a reason why petrol heads in the know have snapped up all of the 675 LTs on the market. And they know, like I do, that there is nothing like this. Hopefully at some point in the future, I'll be able to drive some more McLarens, as I really haven't driven that many, but it would be good at one time to get into perhaps a 765 LT Spider or a 600 LT or a P1. But for now, my total experience of the McLaren brand is this car and ownership has been unaffected by problems. There are lots of YouTubers who moan about McLaren and say that their cars are completely unreliable and break all the time. But that's not been my experience so far. So hopefully you've enjoyed my supercar day and the things that I've got up to. Hopefully it's been interesting and entertaining. If you like what we're doing on The Car Guys, please subscribe, leave comments and likes. And there'll be another episode next week.